So the first step to identify a good customer, perhaps when you get to the meeting stage or a first phone call when, when they've actually called you and want to find out a little bit more about you. First step is to find out whether they have a genuine need for your product or your service. So Marketeers has a fancy word for this. They call it your value proposition. So in other words, it's understanding what exactly it is about your product or service that might excite a buyer, that might um, trigger some pain in their company that they really need fixing. So a value proposition is not just about, uh, in our case, providing marketing. It could be about the way we work with you. It could be about the monthly meetings that you like. It could be that uh, we, we work on KPIs and measuring and monitoring. So there are softer things around whether you need a new website or whether you need a new leaflet or whether you need a new marketing strategy. It's in the way you work. And the only way you can really understand and get to grips with that is to talk to some of your customers and to talk to them in depth. So a little tick survey with four or five points on a smart survey or a survey monkey isn't enough here. You've really got to get to grips with uh, what your customer really likes about working with you. And sometimes having somebody independent come along and do those interviews can be really valuable because a good customer won't mind spending a few minutes on the phone or meeting someone in person and really delving into to the reasons why that relationship really works well for them in practice. So understanding those reasons is very important. And there are also levels of what uh, salespeople call pain. When you're talking to a new customer, on the surface, when they first talk to you on the phone and you don't know them very well, they might come up with a surface reason for dealing with you. So in my business, as quite often they will say, for example, oh, we need a new website. Now, when I start to question them, sometimes on the phone and sometimes at our first meeting, I really want to understand what it is about their website that they don't like what it is about their website that isn't working for them. And it could be that, that, yes, the website isn't great, but the real reason they want to engage with you is they need more sales leads and the website isn't providing those. So there's something about the way it's set up or the way it's functioning or the messaging on it that isn't actually converting the traffic that they get. So then we get to that second level. So we've established, for example, that a website might not be very good at converting leads. That's a sort of business level pain. If we can delve a little deeper and again establish a good relationship and a good rapport with that person, that customer, so we're still at the customer's uh, proposition stage, we're not working with them, this is before we start working with them, we start to ask them about what impact that has on them personally. And if you're talking to a business owner, that impact personally can be much more powerful than, oh, I need a new website. It might mean that they can't sell their business. And perhaps if, like me, they're a little bit older and they want to come out of the workplace and they want to exit and sell their business on as a going concern, that that might be the most important thing to them. They actually need a process that can demonstrate that they've got sales leads coming into the business and they've got a sales process that works at converting those at a good reasonable rate for that business to be worthwhile somebody else investing in. So that becomes a very personal reason for someone to do business with you. And if you can get to a personal reason for someone to do business with you, they are actually much more likely to buy from you.